Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. So if you're convicted about anything tonight, you think oh, I, need, I need to change that, I need to change that, I need to change that, I need to change that. I don't want you to go home and just try harder to act better. Because that's really not going to solve anything. But you know what I would like you to do? Second Peter 2, 7 and 8. I read this, and this just really kind of got me, because I could relate to this. For he rescued righteous Lot, greatly worn out and distressed by the wanton ways of the ungodly and the lawless. So it says that Lot, by the time God rescued him, was just worn out <laughs> from the ways of the people that he was living around. But that just man living among them tortured his righteous soul every day with what he saw and heard, with their unlawful and their wicked deeds. Can I tell you something? I'm not, I'm not comfortable in the world much anymore. I spend a lot of time by myself and a lot of time at home when I'm not ministering. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with a lot of what's going on. And, uh, I think if we are, there's a problem. I was at the gym a couple days working out, a couple, couple days ago working out, and there were two older gentlemen in there. You know, first of all, the elderly people ought to be sweet, not obnoxious. And <laughs> I mean, first of all, they were complaining and murmuring and grumbling, and, and then one of, one of the guys started cussing and taking God's name in vain. Well, you know, I wasn't... that, that don't, That makes me uncomfortable. It needs to make us uncomfortable. Then music comes through the sound system there, and, and it's, it's some kind of music, and it's got cussing in it. And I'm, so then, you know, that makes you uncomfortable. There's more wrong with us if we're not uncomfortable than if we are comfortable. It should make you uncomfortable if you're sitting at the lunch table and everybody's gossiping about somebody else. It makes me uncomfortable when I'm out to lunch with a handful of ministers and one of them decides to start talking un unkindly about some other preacher somewhere. That makes me uncomfortable. We need to ask ourselves, are we uncomfortable enough? Or are we too comfortable? God didn't come just to make us comfortable. Sometimes he puts us in uncomfortable situations and it's so we can turn the light up brighter. I've heard people say, oh, Sister Joyce, you've got to pray for me to get another job. I'm the only believer where I work. Well, I ain't praying for you to get another job. That would be ridiculous. If you're the only believer there, why would you even want to get out of there? Because you're not comfortable. Come on, don't ask me to pray like that. I'm not going to pray like that. I went to Indonesia three weeks ago. I flew 47 hours in seven days, and I was not comfortable. And when I got back, I had a stomach virus from something I got a hold of over there for another seven days. I was not comfortable. But I preached to a few million people while I was there. So that makes me comfortable in spirit. We have medical teams that go around the world, and these people amaze me, just amaze me. I got a report yesterday, one of our medical teams was in Haiti, and when they, they couldn't go where they wanted to be, they get the, there's always some hoopla going on trying to keep them from doing what they're doing. And so they ended up out in the bush somewhere in a school doing their medical outreach. And when they got there, there was a guy already waiting who had a badly infected tooth, and he was the son of the local witch doctor. And he had on his witch doctor clothes. Well, before it was over, he got saved, took off his witch doctor shirt, which is a which is a big thing. I mean, that's a big thing for them because that's like them standing up publicly renouncing witchcraft. He went and got his son. The son got saved. Well, you know what? Those doctors and nurses and medical professionals who go and do that, they take their vacation time. They pay their own way. And many times they're in a place where for five days they're going to be going to the bathroom in a hole in the ground. It's rip-roaring hot. They're not comfortable. We can't get addicted to comfort. 
Amen. Sometimes I think we want to be comfortable when we shouldn't be, and there's other times when we should be uncomfortable and we're not. Aren't there times when you just feel like you're uncomfortable out in the world? It just makes you kind of like, man, I don't really want to do this, but I think God wants me to. So <laughs> here comes a few ouchies. Are you comfortable in the world we live in today? Can you sit at the lunch table and work and complain about the company and gospel about other employees and be comfortable? Hmm. Are you comfortable telling a lie? Can you call in to work and say you're sick and not come in when you really just want to take the day off? Can you lie about why you're late for work and not feel uncomfortable? Can you sit and play on your computer when the boss is not looking, then when he walks in the room, act like you're working? <laughs> Can you have sex with someone else while you're married? And feel comfortable. I love this scripture. Proverbs 25, 26, like a muddied fountain and a polluted spring is a righteous man who yields, falls down, and compromises his integrity before the wicked. You know what that's saying? A righteous man, if he doesn't maintain his integrity in front of the wicked, he's just a mud hole. You realize how important it is? Is everybody with me tonight? I haven't lost you, have I? You know how important it is that we get out there and shine? And we don't have to be religious about it. I don't think that we've got to get out there and be religious and have our six-pack Bibles on our hips and covered up with bumper stickers and, you know, big crosses. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes that just has the opposite effect, if you want to know the truth. I think we need to uh, just be normal godly. Believers need to just have this normal, godly, loving, cool, good, happy, gracious behavior. Let your light shine. Now, under the new covenant of grace, God gives us undeserved favor, and he also gives us the power that we need to live godly lives. So if you're convicted about anything tonight, you think, I need, I need to change that, I need to change that, I need to change that, I need to change that. I don't want you to go home and just try harder to act better because that's really not going to solve anything. But you know what I would like you to do? Fall more in love with Jesus. Spend more time with Him. Spend a little more time in your Bible. Be a little more thankful. You know, the more that we hang out with Jesus, the more we have a desire to be like Him. And the more we realize how much God has done for us, the more we love Him. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey me. So if you have an area of disobedience in your life, I'm not asking you to go home and try harder. I'm asking you to love Jesus more, be thankful more, and the more you fall in love with Him, the more it's just going to be a natural outflow out of your life to want to do what's right. Amen? Love Jesus. Now, five simple ways that we can be a good example in the world. Number one, be stable. Not led around by our emotions. Are you getting anything out of this so far? <laughs> Listen, every single one of you, God has got you strategically placed somewhere. I saw that so clearly several years ago. It was just like God just showed me that. He said, my people are everywhere. They're everywhere. They're in schools. They're in grocery stores. They're in every shopping center, every factory, every bookstore, every neighborhood. I mean, we are everywhere. And, but we can't just blend in. That's the problem. We can't just blend in and just kind of do whatever is going to, you know, just, I don't know, kind of 
keep everybody comfortable. We don't want them to think we're too weird. We don't want them to think we're strange. And so we just kind of blend in. I don't think we should blend in. I think that there should be a difference. I think that we should stand out and not in some obnoxious religious way, but I don't think that you should go in Starbucks every morning to get a coffee for six months and somebody not know that you're different than most of the other people that come in there. I don't think if you're a lady who goes and get your nails done, I don't think that you should sit in the same chair for three or four or five months or a year and people never not realize that you're different. Our relationship with God should be a normal part of our conversation. When we talk about God, we don't all of a sudden get religion. Well, now go. <laughs> Everywhere we go, God has got you where you're at. Stop being so itchy to get away from where you're at and find out if maybe God's got you there for a purpose and all you need to do is turn it up to the next level of brightness. Amen? Be stable. Not led by your emotions. Be the same at home and at work as you are in church. Amen. We cannot have emotional reactions to things. We need to be the same when we have problems as when we don't have problems. We need to be the same when we don't get our way as we are when we get our way. Stable. I wrote a book a couple of years ago called Living Beyond Your Feelings. If you don't have it, get it. Learn how to manage your emotions and stop letting them manage you. We don't have to let our emotions control us. We can feel things. We had an example today when we got here, and I thought, my gosh, how God has changed me. We call ahead of time, tell the hotel, they make arrangements at the office. Okay, we need a 12 o'clock check-in. Will the room be cleaned by 12 o'clock? Yes, we'll make sure the room is cleaned by 12 o'clock. Well, of course, we get there quarter to one, the room's not cleaned. So, I... Uh, the guy that works for us, he's calling ahead of time. Is the room clean? Is the room clean? No, the room's not clean. The room's not clean. And so I could tell, you know, I mean, they want everything to be nice for me, and he wants me to be able to go in and go right to my room. And I said, well, you know what? If the room is not cleaned, then we'll just sit in the lobby and wait until they clean it, and we'll just stay happy. Now, that's a whole new different Joyce. <laughs> I mean, that is a totally different Joyce than the Joyce we would have had even 10 years ago. I would have been... What is the matter with those people? You come in here, you pay good money, you call them ahead of time, can't anybody do what you ask them to do? I know none of you are like that, right? <laughs> well, guess what? We walked in the hotel, and just as we walked in, they handed us the keys. I think a lot of times we create our own mess because we're getting upset, and the devil is just laughing his head off and loves every minute of it. Amen? Stability is a great witness. You know that? I believe that. I think just being stable is such a great witness. And my gosh, I used to be all over the place, up and down, here and there, mad and happy. And Dave said he can remember driving home from work at night thinking, well, I wonder what she'll be like tonight. <laughs> and the sad thing was, was I didn't know either until the devil told me. The next thing that we can do is be a happy believer. Just be joyful. Be a happy believer. Not, not a believer who looks like you've been baptized in lemon juice <laughs> or prune juice. Be a happy believer. You know, everybody in the world wants to be happy. And if we're happy and we have, it's obvious we have what they want, it's not going to be long and they're going to start asking you a few questions. And you know, it's, it's one thing to try to cram Jesus down somebody's throat. It's a much better plan to live the life in front of them and, let, and be a little salty and let them get hungry. Then you don't have to cram it down their throat. They're asking you and they're ready to eat what you give them. But we got to make an investment. So what do people want? People want consistency. People, so get out there and be consistent. 
It won't be long, and they'll be hanging around you, asking you what's different about you. Man, then you can invite them to go to church. It'll be so easy. They'll want to come. You can tell them, well, I'm different because I have Jesus in my life. I used to be this and this and that and that, but man, he's changed me. Over the years, God has changed me. And now I have peace and now I have joy. But if we don't have that, then what kind of a witness is it? If we're not any different than anybody else out there, then, then what do we have? We just got a bumper sticker and a trip to church each week and a cross around our neck. And it, but we got to have the fruit to go with it. Amen? And we grow into that. There's no doubt about that. Nobody needs to feel bad if you're not fully loaded and walking in everything just yet. But we need to have a desire to grow and to change. And when we have that desire, the Bible says when you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. I want to ask you tonight, are you hungry and thirsty for righteousness? Are you hungry for holiness? Are you hungry for spiritual maturity? Are you hungry to be the kind of person that cannot get what you want 10 days in a row and still be stable and still be happy? You ain't clapping quite as loud as you did on the other two. I, you know what? You can learn so much by listening to the clap. <laughs> Yay! Just be happy. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, I actually believe that there might be more to that scripture than what we even realize. I'm not so sure that maybe joy isn't the strength of the church. It's really hard to handle a really happy person. I mean, just what is the devil going to do if the more he throws at you, the happier you get? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. See, that's why we can't, we can't just sink down into what's going on in the world today. We, we can't be like everybody else. You know, in Matthew 24, there's another list that's signs of the end times. Wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes in diverse places. And we could go check, 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 check. Yep, that's all here. I mean, my gosh, you can't even get over. I mean, we do disaster relief at our ministry, and we can't even get finished trying to relieve people from this disaster, and there's another one. I mean, it's just constant everywhere, all over the world. But you know what? Those are not the only signs of the end times in Matthew 24. Another one is in the last days, many will be offended and they will stumble and fall away. Just like those young ladies that got offended at the pastor because he tried to help them. And he, you know, no pastor wants to go do that. He didn't go do that just for the fun of it. He did it because he cared about them and he didn't want to see them do that to themselves. But what did they get? They got offended and they stumbled and they fell away. And that's exactly what Matthew 24 says will happen. We can't be the kind of people that if we get one little word of correction from somebody that's in authority over us, like, well, I'm out of here. Bless God, I don't have to put up with that. Who do you think you are? <laughs> we need to have a humble enough attitude to say, God, are you trying to use them to get something through to me that maybe I need to listen to? Amen. We've all got blind spots in our life. Just like you have blind spots in your rearview mirrors on the side of the car, we've all got blind spots in our life. And there's things that we just can't see that maybe somebody else does see, and they might just love us enough to share with us something that could end up saving our lives or saving our marriages if we'll have enough humility to just listen. What about accountability? We need to be accountable. We don't want to be like everybody else. We don't want to just blend in. We want to be peaceful. We want to be joyful. Number three, just be good to people. The way that we can be a light is just get out in the world and just be good to people. My goodness. You know, that's something that every single one of you can do. You can do it before you get out of here tonight. You can encourage somebody. You can smile. If you're going to get a bite to eat after this is over, maybe grab somebody that looks lonely and say, hey, a few of us are going out to eat. You want to? You want to go? I'll even, I'll even 
pay for it. I'll, come on, just go with us. I'll, I'll treat you. You could change somebody's life doing that. But then sometimes we just want to be with our little comfortable group. We don't want anybody around that we don't know. My goodness, we might have to work a little bit to get to know them. Wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Amen. Philippians 4 5, I love this. Listen to this. Let all men know and perceive your unselfishness, your considerateness, and your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. Wow. Let's look at that again. That is so cool. Let all men know and perceive your unselfishness, your considerateness, and your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. So he's saying because Jesus is coming soon, because the time is close, more than ever we need to get out in the world and we need to be considerate and have good manners and we need to love people and we need to be happy and we need to be peaceful. We need to have something that people want. Amen? Amen? But I'll tell you something that I have learned to do. I've learned to be good to people. I'll tell you something. I don't think there's anything more disgusting than a Christian who mistreats people. I don't really know any plainer way to say that. Acts 10, 38. See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and in particular curing all that were oppressed of the devil. If your Ramsavite needs help, help them. If somebody at work needs a ride home, go offer to take them. Be a blessing everywhere that you go. You can win souls if you'll be a blessing everywhere that you go. You know that? I mean, that, you're just like a magnet when you're good to people, when you make people feel good. Be positive, number four. Just be positive. The world is so negative today. Bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news, bad news. Everywhere you go, bad news. But good news nourishes the bones. I love good news. If you want to put a smile on my face, just give me some good news. My daughter called the other day and she said, good news. I said, yay. She said, I know how you love good news. How many of you love good news? So we need to be the bearer of good news, don't we? Number Five, to the best of your ability, keep doing what is right. That doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect all the time, but it's not going to hurt us either to make an effort that's anointed by the grace of God. We don't do anything outside of God, but an effort that's anointed by the grace of God to just turn the light up a little bit more, be a little bit happier, a little more consistent, Maybe in another year or so, we can turn that lamp up a little bit more. And then maybe we can turn it up a little bit more. Do you have any idea what would happen in the world? Let's just think about this. What would happen in the world if everybody who is a Christian would just not be easily offended and just be good to people? We just take those couple of little things. Just those couple little things. Instead of being quick to be offended, just say, oh, no, that's not a problem. That's, you know, just let it go. We all do stuff that we shouldn't do. No, I, I forgive you. Not a problem. We've got such a great opportunity today. If you're alive today, it's not an accident. You're in your neighborhood on purpose. You're at your job on purpose. You're at your school on purpose. And God wants more out of you than just for you to come to a church service somewhere on a Sunday morning and be entertained and then go back out in the world and act like everybody else. He doesn't want us to blend in. He wants us to stand out. Is anybody here willing to turn your light up just a little bit brighter? Amen. Just turn it up maybe one more notch or so. Well, you know, Jesus is coming back, and we want to remember that and be aware of it. And so remember to live ready lives. Don't just be the kind of person like, oh, Jesus come back, I'm going to get ready. No, we need to live ready and be good examples in the world. Don't just blend in, but be bold and stand out.
women in Albania are taught to be silent and not to speak out. This is something that has come from long past ago and although many organizations uh, do advocate and do encourage women to bring it out and to um, tell the truth, it's something that has to do with the culture. If something happens to you, it's a shame factor. For some women, the Christian church is becoming a refuge, a place where they can speak freely. However, less than 2% of the population are Christian and most of them have no spiritual mothers or fathers. What I'm facing, I cannot share with my parents. They are not Christians. What I'm facing, I cannot, I do not have an adult Christian to talk to and say, is this normal, what is happening to me? Or how can I face this difficulty? A counsel is something that we lack. The first generation has just to experience everything, good or bad. And this spiritual mother for people, it's for, for the ladies and for the women, it's very important because it's somebody saying, I've gone through this way. It's painful, but you're gonna make it. And this is what Joyce has been transmitting to us and giving us power to go forward. Even though there are hard times in our life, even though not everything is perfect, but we know that somebody else went through the same road, the same pain, and she made it. So we're gonna make it as well.